Hello everybody, uh, my name is Vito with the Vito and Anna team, Realtor with EXP Realty. I'm here today with Fabio Campanella from the uh, Campanella Group out of Toronto, Canada. Fabio's my, uh, my first cousin, I've known Fab my whole life. And today we're going to be having a conversation about real estate, specifically targeted towards Canadians buying investment properties in Florida. So one of the common questions I get from my clients is, what are the best areas for Canadians to purchase rental properties in South Florida? So we, we like to start with budget. You know, it really depends on how much you can spend. We have clients who come to us with a budget of half a million dollars. They may have it in cash. They may have 25% down to do um, financing, or they come to us with a million dollars. And, you know, depending on how much they can afford to spend, will really determine where we can look to to purchase you mentioned financing right uh this is one of the one of the roadblocks we always get into with canadians how do we get financing so it's difficult to get financing in canada for the purchase of an american property but is it possible for the canadian investor to actually get financing here from an american bank yes absolutely we have a, uh, a multitude of lenders who will offer financing to Canadians um, or other international um, buyers. What do those terms look like? Like, What am I uh, looking at putting down in terms of percentage on the property? You'll, you'll need to put down anywhere between 20 and 30% of the purchase price. And you'll have to qualify based on your personal income or the uh, income revenue of the rental property. And does that make a difference the type of uh, property it is? Like for example, let's say I purchase a single family home and I put a long-term tenant in it versus, I don't know, buying a 12-plex apartment building. Is one gonna be commercial financing, the other is gonna be traditional home financing? Yes, traditionally anything over four units in a multi-family is considered commercial and would be structured very differently than a single family home or a one to four plex units, okay. which are, are considered residential. So, so on a simple transaction, like a residential property, I don't know, I, I guess you would range probably from half a million to a million dollars on a good quality residential property, putting in a long-term tenant, it's realistic to expect a 20 to 30% down payment. And then what does the actual mortgage look like? Is it gonna be different from what we're used to in Canada? Because in Canada, for example, mortgages must renew by law every five years. Yes, um, it's, it's very different. In Canada, like you said, you have a max term of five years where your rate is locked. In the United States, it's very common to see a 30 year fixed rate mortgage However, we do have adjustable rate mortgages where you can see them adjusting month to month, but the more common terms are three, five, or seven year arms. Okay. Arm is the term that you'll hear for adjustable rate mortgage. So from a real estate investing perspective, I know myself and my clients, we're always worried about cash flows, right? So if I am putting, let's say 30% down, which I think is a reasonable down payment, uh, and I put a long-term tenant into a single family home here in South Florida, should I be expecting a positive, negative, or break-even type of cash flow? With a 30% down payment, it's not unheard of to have a positive cash flow investment property. Let me give you an example. We recently sold a condo to a Canadian investor. It happened to be a cash deal. It was in the low 300,000s. By the time they renovated the unit, they're in at about 400,000, right? So let's, let's use round numbers here. If you take 400,000 at an 8% interest rate, 25% down, $120,000, you're now gonna mortgage $280,000 at 8%. Add in your property taxes, your insurance, and say a four hundred dollar condo fee, mm -hmm. you're looking at a at a, at a full payment. Look, you're looking at a payment of twenty eight hundred dollars a month. Okay, right? that same unit, we're gonna rent it out for about thirty two hundred a month. So you're cash flowing about four hundred bucks. And that's on a long term rental. That's on a long term rental with like a good quality tenant. Yeah, that's on a long term rental with a good quality tenant. Okay. So that's not too bad, actually. That's that's not so bad when you consider 
the appreciation of the property and the pay down of the mortgage. So what's the, what does the process look like for a Canadian applying for an American mortgage on, a, on an American rental property? They'll, they'll gather your personal information, mm -hmm. um, things like income, the property information, uh, potentially do an appraisal. For an income property specific, they will look at the rental revenue. And in most cases, if the rental revenue is able to cover the mortgage payments and all of the other payments like taxes, insurance, interest, etc., they will approve you based on that. Of course, you'll need to be um, credit worthy and have the appropriate down payment.